This is my audio inputs and outputs as they would naturally appear without any sort of extra configuration. We have Starship Matisse HD Audio Controller Analog Stereo, which is a very long way to say the headphone jack. We have this giant line right here, which I literally never use for outputting audio over the HDMI on my GPU. And then my mixer board shows up as its model number. The inputs are basically the same thing with the addition of the Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus Analog Stereo, which is my capture card for my consoles. And then the card section, basically the same thing. And this is what it looks like with a bit of configuration in Wire Plumber. No longer do I have those ridiculously long names, I just have the system for the system output, mixer board for the mixer board, and you'll notice that one is missing, because I don't use it. I don't ever output audio over my GPU, because I have speakers, so I'm going to use the speakers instead. And then for my inputs, it's much cleaner here as well. The capture card is just capture card. Very simple. If I have another capture card, I could change the name to be something so I know which capture card it is, like console capture or something like that. But as it stands, it's so much neater. And then for the cards, it's exactly the same. So when you're running Pulse Audio and you plug in a new audio device like a microphone or a mixer board or a capture card or anything like that, or you open up a new audio process like a music player and start playing music or a web browser and start playing a YouTube video, Pulse Audio is going to automatically connect everything together. There is never a time unless your audio device is set to the incorrect thing where you have to manually move audio processes around. But much like with Jack, out of the box, Pipewire does not do this. For the Pipewire video side, this is totally fine because the video side is so application dependent and there are so few things that need to be managed that letting applications do it manually isn't really that big of a deal. But for the audio side, that would be really, really inconvenient. So what Pipewire does is it delegates this work to something known as a session manager. The default session manager, which most distros shipping Pipewire are using, is called Pipewire Media Session. This is the reference implementation that does everything it needs to do, but it's not that powerful of a solution. Wire Plumber is what I'm using instead. Wire Plumber provides an incredibly powerful, but questionably documented Lua plugin framework. A lot of what it can do, I don't personally understand. It's like fairly complex audio setting stuff that if you're an audiophile is probably things you want to go mess around with. But if you don't understand them, it's for the best not to touch those. What I suggest though, is at least going and cleaning up your audio devices. There's a lot more complex stuff you can do, but our solution is going to be fairly templatey. Now, there are multiple locations that the wire plumber configuration can be located. We are going to be working in the user directory. So this is going to be located in your .config directory, inside of a folder called wire plumber. And then in this folder, the folder probably isn't going to be made, but you need to make a folder called main.lua.d. And once that's done, inside of that folder, this is where all of the plugins can actually go. So right now, I've got all of these files. Ignoring the first one, that's outside of the scope of today's video. So all of these separate files are setting one individual thing. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. The reason why I do that is just so I know exactly what each file is going to be doing. But if you want to group all of the things for a certain device into one file, that is also totally doable. So you want to have like all of your capture card stuff in one file, all of your mixer stuff in one file, totally fine. Go ahead and do that if you want to do it. Also, this uses the number dash name convention like things such as Xorg. And I believe that I want to say system D uses it as well, but correct me if I'm wrong there. So... The reason why it's like this is if things need to be loaded in a certain order, you'll increment or decrement the numbers to make sure things are loaded like they should be. Because the default OS configuration starts at 50, I like to start everything at 51 onwards. So before we can go and set anything, we need to know how to reference stuff. So the unique identifier that I go with is the name. So you'll see things like ulcercard.usb and whatever this giant thing is here. That is going to uniquely identify my mixer board, or for my cam link, for example, it's going to be this right here. So the way that we find this out is very simple. 
if we go and run pw-cli list-objects and then either pass in device or node, it will go and list out a bunch of things on our system. Device is going to be any physical element, so the audio card in my system, my mixer board, my capture card, in my case, anything that shows up under the card section, whereas the nodes are going to be any of the logical audio elements, so the applications running on my system, the input for my mixer board, the output for my system, anything showing up in the output or the input section, including these things showing up as applications. That's all well and good, but this is still a text dump. So how do we actually find anything? So for your nodes, you'll notice something known as a media class. OBS, for example, has a stream input audio. What you need to look for is any audio syncs. These are your audio outputs. Any audio sources like, say, this one right here, this is going to be an audio input. Now for your device, this is also going to have a media class, but it's going to be a little bit different. So you'll notice these video slash devices, if you have any like video capture cards, these are not what you want to be using. This is for pipe wire video. What you want to be looking for are the audio slash devices instead. These are going to be your audio cards, mixer boards, things like that. And everything that I'm doing is using the Ulsa API. If you're looking at any like Bluetooth headphones, Bluetooth speakers, this is going to say Bluez instead. It's going to work exactly the same way, with the exception of where we enter Ulsa, just enter Bluez instead. So let's break down one of these files. For the record, I am not a Lua programmer. I see it entirely as a configuration language. So if I use terminology not correct in the Lua context, that's going to be why. So everything in Wireplumber, at least everything that we're going to be doing, is handled with rules. And the ulcer rules can be found in ulcer underscore monitor dot rules. If we're talking about the Bluetooth rules, those are going to be in the blueez underscore monitor dot rules. So this table is also a table of tables. Each of these rules I'm defining, this right here is one rule, is also a table. Now, this is just the name that I gave it. Call it whatever you want. Only the things inside of the table actually matter. So for what we're doing, we need two tables inside the table. We need the matches table, and we also need the apply underscore properties table. Lua doesn't really care about line breaks, it cares about syntax, so make sure you separate these tables with a comma. Then in the matches table, define another table, and then inside of that table, we can define tables based on how we want to match. Because we are matching on a unique property, we only need one more table. In this case, I'm modifying my system output. This is a node and also an audio sync. So we go and run the command here. It should be this one right here. So we're matching on this property, the node.name with this value being set. Pretty much all we do there is go and take this value, node.name, comma, equals, comma, and then the value we are matching on, which is this value right here. For the properties, we only need one table, but unlike the matches tables, we do need to set the key and the value separately. So from my experience, you're generally going to want to set the node.description and the node.nick. In the case of devices, it'll be device.description and device.nick. So the nick is the nickname. Now, the description is used for your general application. So in things like your audio mixer, if an application asks you for an input or an output, it's usually going to use the description. But when we're talking about a more advanced application like a patch bay, for example, like QPW Graph or QJAC CTL, this is normally going to use the nickname, at least for the names of the individual elements in each node. You define the key by putting it in square brackets and then equals whatever it is you want to set it to. And like with everything else we've seen, make sure you separate the different entries with a comma. In case you don't feel like writing this out, I'll leave this template in the description down below. Now for disabling things, all we do is set a single property. That property being disabled. Now disabled is not going to be in the list of properties that are available, but every single element is going to have that as a property. 
And if you set the disabled property to true, so in the case of a device that is device.disabled, a node, node.disabled, then it will no longer appear in your list. Now, once you have your list of files, you're going to notice that nothing has actually changed unless you do a system reboot, because Wire Plumber doesn't update things on the fly. It only loads in the configs when it is first loaded. So the easiest way to fix this is to go and just restart Pipewire. We can do this by doing systemctl dash dash user restart and then Pipewire. Now, if you're not using systemd, work it out for yourself, but the systemd users can do this. I'm not going to because it will break my microphone. Now, Wire Plumber is definitely not for everyone, but if you're using Pipewire and you want a more powerful Pipewire experience, Wire Plumber is absolutely the way to go. I have had a few issues here and there. There was a time where, depending on the order I had my files, sometimes it would delete my system audio for no reason. Now that's not a problem. I don't know what happened. It's pipe wire and wire plumber still like very early software. So there is going to be a couple of teething issues here and there. So if you use pipe wire, let me know if you're using wire plumber. And if you don't use pipe wire, what are you using instead? Are you still on Pulse Audio? Or are you one of those crazy people that do everything through Vanilla Ulsa? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to something better paid, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.